Hey guys, uh, next thing on the list for the Huracan maintenance is going to be the brake fluid flush. No idea what the dealer charges. It was part of the $10,000 maintenance plan. So I'm guessing probably a thousand bucks or more. So uh, what you're going to need is I have a Mighty Vac system. So you can use this and just pull vacuum from each caliper. I'm actually only going to use the container and hose, and I'm going to use my air compressor and do the pressurized method. You're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench for the bleeders. And for bonus points, we're going to clean up the hubs. Also today, you're going to need some anti-seize lubricant and some 400 grit sandpaper. The fluid... I'm using is Castrol RSF. This has the highest wet boiling temperature of any fluid and it's compatible with DOT4. Uh, if you just cruise lightly and you're on the street, you can just use a, a DOT4 fluid, but if you're going to do spirited driving where you may heat up the brakes or any track days, uh, this stuff would be the go-to. So there's a couple options. Uh, how to do this you can just use a vacuum bleeder at the each caliper um, I also have this it's a power bleeder so you're supposed to put the fluid inside here and then hook this up to the master cylinder but uh, what I do is I leave this empty and I took the factory cap and uh, epoxied just a fitting here so what I'm going to do is just use that tank to pressurize this and then just crack each bleeder screw open, uh, drain about four ounces at a time, and then refill the reservoir each four ounces that I pull out. Uh, so it should make it for a pretty quick bleed. So I had planned to use my uh, power bleeder for this, but I found out that this cap does not really seal very well, even though I made uh, my own fitting and a new gasket for it. So what I did is uh, I hooked up to my air compressor and set the regulator to 5 PSI. And the air is leaking out, but it should uh, give enough pressure to the system that I can push fluid out of each caliper pretty easily. So we'll just leave this air hooked up and running while I attempt to bleed out all the calipers. So I realized if the fluid's pretty clean, you really can't tell the level at all looking from the outside. So I did a little digging online and found out that uh, the screen's pretty easy to pop out with just a flat screwdriver and a needle nose and then you can look down from the top. So uh, you may not need to take your trunk compartment all apart if you just pop the screen out the top you should be able to do all this without disassembling the front of the car but yeah, it was good exercise to take this apart so i could see what's all up here this is the lift pump right here so if i ever need to do any maintenance i uh, i know where everything's at up here so i told you i removed the screen from the reservoir so now you can really peer down in there and you can see where the level's at so <clears throat> when I fill it back up when I'm finished I'm just gonna fill until this float is completely submerged I'm gonna call that good so it's uh, bleeding out pretty nicely here I'm just finishing up on the rears, I've done about uh, 16 to 20 ounces of fluid so far, and it's pretty clean to begin with, so it's hard to tell when the new fluid's coming through. And uh, one other thing I like to do, because the paint on these calipers is really nice, is uh, when you disconnect your lines, you get a little drip of brake fluid. You're going to want to clean all that brake fluid up real good. And there's a little bit around this rubber gasket. So I just take some 
WD-40. And use that to clean out any remaining brake brake fluid. Careful not to get any WD-40 on your rotors. But uh, WD-40 is really safe for paint, so it's uh, a lot better than leaving brake fluid on the caliper. That may eat up the rubber and the the powder coat or paint, whatever they finish these with. So just got to bleed out the fronts and make sure the fluid level's good and we'll be done. One other thing you can do while you got the wheels off is uh, on the outer surface of the hub here, it's a little rust, so I'm just going to take some 400 grit sandpaper, clean this up, and then put a little bit of anti-seize compound on this to try to help prevent the rust from reforming again. This will help make it easier to get your wheels off and on in the future. So I got this one cleaned up and uh, applied some anti-seizer on there. You'll notice that it's a lot easier to slip the wheel back on over the hub. These are hub centric of course so the wheel fits really tight over that hub. Any rust on there can make it stick and actually make it pretty difficult to get the wheel off sometimes. In addition to cleaning up your hubs, uh, now is a great time also to inspect your struts. Uh, this is very normal for this dust boot to look like this. Nothing to be concerned about. But the dealer did tell me my right front shock was leaking and they wanted to replace both front shocks at a price of $15,000. And I don't see anything leaking on this, so I'm not sure what he was talking about. If they just wanted to try to make some money, if he thought he saw oil somewhere, but I don't see any issues here. Alright, we're on the last caliper, and uh, what I've been doing is basically bleeding out on the outside bleeder until I'm comfortable that there's fresh fluid coming out and then I'm going to the backside bleeder and pulling about two ounces uh, just to make sure that the the rear pistons have fresh fluid in them also so we'll crack the lines on this last one if it feels like it's gonna strip stop immediately take your hose off Put the box end of the wrench on there. Last thing you want to do is strip one of these bleeders out. There we go. That fluid looks a little dark as it first starts coming out. So we'll let this simmer for a few minutes, do the back side, and then uh, wrap this one up. Alright, so we're all done bleeding, and uh, looks like the brake level is about three quarters of the way up that float. So I'm just going to top it off so the fluid is covering the float. It's nearly impossible to look at the min and max lines and see where the fluid is, so... We'll just top it off this way, put the cap back on, so I did modify my original cap. I could not find a cap anywhere for this car, but it looks like any VW or Audi from 1996 or newer uses the same cap. So I went ahead and just ordered one on eBay, should be here in a few days. Uh, I'll confirm that's correct and should be good to go for a couple years. Thanks for watching. I realized I forgot to put the screen back in, so once it's topped off, we're gonna just make sure this is nice and clean and this should just snap right back in.